All right, it's Python on hardware time. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Start the, Python week. The only news this week and the news to talk about is it's Circuit Python Day. Yes. So this Friday, and um, just so everyone knows how this works out at Adafruit, um, I don't think we're going to have to put up a, a notice on the site, but this is a company holiday. Um, there's no holidays in August, um, so we made up one. But yeah, it's like we already had Labor Python Day, Day, and then there's Thanksgiving, and then there's Christmas, yeah. and then. And one of the things that we know that's really important to to all of us who work is time off and being able to use that as a float holiday or being able to just take time off, um, because there's more to life than work, and a lot of folks, uh, you know, store time off for vacations and more. So we wanted to have a day that everyone could take off if they wanted to. And so some folks are not going to be uh, physically at Adafruit, um, but I think we're going to have um, enough folks to keep things going. But a lot of the team is working on all the online efforts. This is still an online event. Probably we'll do some physical stuff in the future. Um, but CircuitPython Day starts Friday, August 19th, and the updated schedule is up. You can check it out on the site. It's everywhere. It's on the blog. It's pretty much everywhere you can go. Starting at 11 a.m. Eastern time, we're gonna do a CircuitPython Day introduction. Then we're gonna be celebrating code and community um, panel discussions. So you might see a Lady Ada or I or some other folks. There's gonna be a CircuitPython development sprint intro video, a CircuitPython project built with Maker Melissa, special edition CircuitPython themed show and tell, CircuitPython 8 preview, CircuitPython day chat with Kat and Jeff and Dan, Foamy Guy Circuit. Python Day Game Jam stream and Circuit Python development sprints. Um, no video content with that. That'll just be the, the, the sprints. But if you want to take advantage of the sprints, Scott and Dan will be helping people who want to contribute to the core or you want to do some library work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, speak up early and we'll, we'll be able to get you a pull request yeah. or an issue or your pet project. You could uh, get help from Dan and Scott <laughs> Um, during that time. And this is uh, the last time we're gonna see Scott before he's on leave for a bit. Um, he'll be back uh, later in the winter yeah. or fall. But uh, now, now's a great time to contribute to CircuitPython and get introduced as a developer. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll answer some of the questions that have come up at the end, but I'll also probably do some of them real time. So uh, during CircuitPython Day, will be deals with certain products that may be featured or is it only focused on software? No, we'll have a discount code. Just look at some of the chats. Um, I'm gonna do it that day. I'm gonna just see what we have uh, in stock and more, because what I don't wanna do if we're like out of a lot of stuff is say like, oh, hey, here's you know a discount code, and then, oh no, this isn't the thing we're featuring. So I would just make sure that um, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, so we'll see how things go on Friday, but there'll be a discount code for sure. Uh, what it'll be for, just stay tuned. And uh, there's other events and things going on. You can check out um, Blues Wireless. They have stuff going on. Um, the newsletter does have some interesting things this week, but you know, like I said, this is uh, all in preparation of CircuitPython week this week. Good news, though. This is, I think, worth mentioning. Um, although maybe you don't need to really pay attention to these rankings, you know, but they are helpful. Um, this index that we look at all the time. This is the InfoWorld. Uh, T-I-O-B, I don't know how people pronounce it, um, but it's a ranking of like the popularity with programming languages, and Python continues to be um, a number one language. And I don't think, so you know one of the problems is people get really polarized um, and dogmatic about religions, like no, it needs to be this. One of the cool things is um, you don't have to commit to any of these. <laughs> you can try them out. So um, the popularity of Python is probably because it's very easy to try out. It's very human readable and you can get really far really fast and then there's a lot of expertise you can add uh, later. And then you can do things like microcontrollers uh, almost within you know seconds now, especially with uh, CircuitPython and MicroPython. So that's kind of neat and it's just, it's just one of those things we see ticking up uh, more and more and more and more. So you know, especially for young folks that are just getting into programming, not only do they get to do some powerful things really fast, but they can also do um, electronics. And a lot of our boards, you know, you, you start with CircuitPython or MakeCode, and then eventually, you know, you're like, look, I want to do, you know, real-time operating systems and like more powerful stuff. You can always move to C, C++. You know, like we did streams on uh, platform IO and we've done projects with Arduino and um, Zephyr and FreeRTOS. So there's, you know, it, Python is, is, I think it's good for powerful projects, but it's also a just great way to prototype stuff that you can then um, refactor and redo in a, uh, you know, more compact language if necessary. Yeah. 
And then um, I'll answer a couple questions while we're here in, in mm-hmm. Circuit Python Day uh, land. Let me uh, go back to Blinka. Well, uh, no, I'll just stay here. Um, so the next question is, uh, do you need any gear for CircuitPython Day? Not really. Like, the good thing is, like, pretty much any board that runs CircuitPython you can have. You can order something. I guess you could potentially get it by Friday. Um, but any any electronics that you can uh, run CircuitPython on. So circuitpython.org slash downloads. You probably have something right now. You can run on a Raspberry Pi. There's pretty much almost anything, anything Pythonic. Yeah, if you want to contribute during sprints, you know, of course, it's best to have the hardware that you want to sprint on. Otherwise, it's going to be really tough. Um, we do have some, you know, um, issues in PRs that are documentation based, and so of course you can do those without hardware. But um, yeah, if you want to contr- contribute code, being able to compile and test the code on your own is going to be really essential. Okay, and then I'll answer this one. Um, why would we have Circuit Python instead of continuing with MicroPython? The good news is there's both. You get to decide what you want based on your needs and hardware and expertise level. So we're the biggest, I think, financial supporter of CircuitPython, at least publicly. MicroPython. On, uh, sorry. Uh, well, both, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> on MicroPython. Both. Um, so we contribute to MicroPython. We sell the boards in our store. Um, we sponsor MicroPython. But we also needed something that, especially back in the day, this was, what, eight years ago now, that yeah. could work on all different platforms. So MicroPython is very specific for very specific types of hardware. And it's, uh, I'd say there's a different level of expertise usually associated with it, where CircuitPython is the educational version, things that get people started very quickly. Um, massive hardware support, lots of devices. Lots of drivers. Lots of drivers. Um, consistent I, APIs. Consistent APIs. Works so, on Raspberry Pi computers. And that's what our customers expect. They wanted, you know, for no, just to give you an analogy, they wanted an Arduino-like experience, but even easier. And so that's not MicroPython. And if you you know check out MicroPython, that's not what their goal of the MicroPython project is. Luckily, um, it's all open source, so you can decide what, what you want and when. I do see a lot of folks deploying MicroPython for. They'll fork MicroPython. And they'll say this is going to be for like my device, and they'll you know like Lego has a fork of MicroPython. Yeah. So that it's basically I, I feel like there's like there's this, a quick Python. Well, there's like this Linuxy version. Like people are like, oh, I need to like run Linux on something, so they'll fork you know their version of Linux and they'll yeah. Run there's it. like 500. Lots yeah, and easily. then there's very big distributions that are made specifically with more ease of use. Yeah, like Ubuntu like, is yeah. designed for one way, Kali is designed for another thing. So, I, you know, one of the things that I think people get trapped in is like, or, it's not, it's end. And if you look at the entities that contribute to MicroPython, Adafruit being uh, one of the bigger ones, and we help with the fundraising. Yeah, and we submit PRs and we fix bugs. I, I think that's the right way to, to look at open source is you're building on top of things together and there's cross-pollination of drivers and more. And there's no way that MicroPython is going to support three... So if you go to circuitpython.org slash downloads, that's not MicroPython's mission to support every different board under the sun. In fact, there's more CircuitPython boards from other companies besides Adafruit than... Adafruit boards, that's that's what we wanted to do. And it's neat to see that, is a giant menagerie of stuff. So that's what we decided to do. And the drivers is, I think, the hardest part to get things to work, and that's what we focused a lot on. Yeah, because we want to make sure all of our sensors and breakouts work, and so we spend a lot of time on um, having really good quality drivers that work with CircuitPython, uh, but that required yeah. having a, continu- a, a an API that's the same across every board. So, anyways, and you know, we try to keep in step with MicroPython as each release comes out. So, that's uh, that's the longest answer. But that's uh, you can also go to CircuitPython.org and scroll down to the bottom, and we There's have a whole thing. There's a lot of text. Okay, and that is Blinka. Python on hardware. Don't forget, this newsletter is available to you. It can be delivered every single week. You can get that at Adafruit Daily. And at adafruitdaily.com, we don't spam you. It's a separate site. It's completely different. It Do we no- sell your data? No. Do we rent your data? No. Do we give your data no. away? Do we trade your data? No. Do we do anything no, with it? No, no, So the reason we did that is because we never wanted anyone to think if they order something on adafruit.com that they're going to get a newsletter you don't you have to try really hard to get an email from us (laughs) 
But Adafruit Daily is just newsletters, um, and it's uh, spam-free, ad-free, and that's how we do that. Okay.